Our next speaker will be Vanessa Merker. Uh, Vanessa is a PhD candidate in health services research at Boston University School of Public Health. She graduated from Brown University with a Bachelor of Science in Cognitive Neuroscience. And her main research interests are access to and coordination of care for patients with rare diseases, including NF1, NF2, and schwannomatosis. And today she's going to be speaking on patient-centered outcomes research. Thank you guys, I'm so excited to be here to talk to you about patient-centered outcomes research, which is really my passion. Um, I work at the Massachusetts General Hospital NF Clinic and really um, getting to sit in on visits with patients, talking to them and their family members has given me so much insight into my own work and I'm really excited for it to become a bigger part of the NF community's uh, research work. So to give a background on sort of where patient-centered outcomes research came from, it really came from a change in medical care itself. So um, sort of the old school traditional model of doctors who have all of the power and decision making and sort of hand down information and you're not really involved has luckily been changing over time to a much more patient-centered approach where we've recognized that when patients are engaged in care and contribute and as a partner in their care process, the care outcomes are better. And we really realized that for research, it's exactly the same. Instead of researchers in silos deciding what to study and how to study, if we engage patients in research and use more patient-centered outcomes, we're going to have better studies, better results, um, and better way to help NF. So in the big picture, patient-centered outcomes research is very practically focused. It's getting you the information you need to make decisions day-to-day -day in the clinic, so real-world decisions, in a way that's using shared decision-making, so your, invoice, your voice and the doctor's together. And so what does that really mean? Um, it means, in the big picture, we really have to focus on weighing the benefits and harms of different interventions, in a, comparing them head to head, and we'll talk more about comparative effectiveness, um, I know, in a later session, but to just introduce the topic. In a lot of traditional research, we um, compare a new drug to something called a placebo, so an inactive sugar pill, or maybe um, usual care, so just sort of your general medical care. And that's a great way to see if a new drug has activity, if it might be working. But it's not the best way if you have two drugs to know which one is going to be the better one for you. And so by doing comparative effectiveness research, where we put two or more drugs or therapies or interventions head to head in the same group of people at the same time, we can really learn more precisely which is better for which person. Although patient-centered outcomes research also recognizes that the same drug is not always going to be the best drug for everyone. You really have to focus on individual differences. And this is because a lot of people have different needs and different values. You might hate getting MRIs, and so the kind of watch and wait strategy where you get multiple MRIs doesn't work for you, but it works for someone else. So patient-centered outcomes research really has to focus uh, and appreciate these differences and get you information that helps you al align your medical care with your preferences. And the way we do this is by making sure that we enroll a wide diversity of participants because we want to make sure if you're sitting in the clinic room and you have a question and you say, well, what happens to someone like me, someone my age, someone my race, someone my age, um, gender, you want to make sure that we have research data that reflects and informs that, which is why it's really important in patient-centered outcomes research to enroll a wide diversity of people from all across the country and um, make sure everyone's engaged. And finally, patient-centered outcomes research is really about outcomes. Um, traditionally, we use a lot of um, measures like tumor measurements, lab values, kind of objective criteria, which are definitely important and have a role to play in managing your health, but they really don't give us the full picture of your quality of life and how you're functioning at school, at work, in your family, all the things that are really important. So patient-centered outcomes answer some of these questions. So some fundamental questions about how long you're going to live, but also how do you feel? How can you do the activities that you want to do, socialize, function in school, and work? 
And one of the best ways that we can get information about those patient-centered outcomes is through something you'll call, here called PROS or PROMS, which stands for Patient Reported Outcome Measures. Fundamentally, it's just a fancy word, usually for a survey. So asking you directly or your parent, sometimes your teacher for kids, how you're functioning and doing day to day, um, which is really key for us in figuring out, does this treatment make a difference overall in your day to day life? And I have an example here, um, which is, this is an actual survey question which we've recommended for use in NF clinical trials. This is the way we've recommended for asking people about how much pain they're in and um, rating it on a zero to 10 scale. So this is something we actually use and has been incorporated into numerous clinical trials. So now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit, talking about from what patient-centered outcomes research is to how it's really being promoted at a national level um, through the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. Um, this is a national institute, and it was actually um, created as part of the Affordable Care Act in 2010, um, here on this timeline. Um, and it is funded by sort of general um, tax dollars, usually actually from a fee paid by insurance companies. But it's not exactly the same. It's not a governmental organization. It's not like the NIH. It's separate. It has its own board of directors and staff. They have a lot more leeway as a nonprofit um, and have really been a leader in not only funding patient-centered outcomes research, but also in how we change the culture around um, engaging patients in research. Um, and to give you a sense of the scope, it's actually been almost six years since the very first grants were issued, and they've issued more than $2 billion in research funding, specifically for patient-centered outcomes research, um, about three quarters of that for comparative effectiveness research, but also um, improving methods and doing work on patient engagement. So actually some of the money for this meeting came from PCORI. Um, and I wanted to highlight that they have a special commitment to rare diseases like NF. Um, $80 million has gone specifically just to look at head-to-head -head drug trials, or head-to-head -head comparisons of treatments in rare diseases, and even more money has been used for um, developing new ways to collect data on rare diseases. They have their own rare disease advisory panel, um, and rare disease applications, grant applications, are just as likely to be funded as um, more common diseases. So they're really committed to innovating in this area. And the other thing I wanted to highlight here at the bottom is that they're really committed to engaging people who are traditionally underrepresented in clinical trials, um, which goes back to making sure we involve a really wide and diverse audience of people. The other thing that makes PCORI special is this focus on stakeholder engagement. Patient engagement is a huge part of that, patients and their family members, but also bringing everyone else to the table who has a role to play in changing healthcare systems, so patient advocacy organizations like CTF, clinicians and researchers, also people who represent um, organizations that can bring about change, so insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, um, and even policymakers, so staff members at the local, state, and national levels who can make some legislation around insurance or other ways that we can change care and making sure everyone's sort of at the table. And this can be hard to bring so many diverse people together. So Vicori has um, issued a couple of core um, key uh, ideas for how we can make engagement work better. Um, one of them, the first is reciprocal relationships, which is really about making sure not only that everyone knows what role they have to play, but that everyone helps decide what that role is going to be. It's not that a researcher decided from the get-go, you get to do this part and you get to do that part. Everybody kind of works together to figure out what can I contribute, how can I help best, so that everyone's voice is really at the table. Co-learning is what we're doing all of today uh, and yesterday at the clinics meeting that we had um, as clinicians where we're all being educated. Researchers are talking to patients about the research process, but then also people are talking to researchers and clinicians to tell them about patient-centeredness and how best to do patient engagement. Because this isn't just about us teaching patients, it's about patients teaching us and really knowing that everyone has uh, something to contribute there. Um, 
The idea of partnerships is really about valuing what everyone brings, both in terms of recognition and giving people their due credit, but also in terms of, of money and um, recognizing the time and experience that people bring to bear. And so Pigori has been very committed to paying people for every activity that they do, um, recognizing that people take time off from work and have to travel and making sure they're compensated for that. And the last group of principles, transparency, honesty, and trust, is really about changing the culture and making sure it's an open atmosphere where everyone's included in decision making. Um, all of the information is shared. It's not like the researchers have all the information and just give you a little bit. It's all on the table. And everyone feels like they can speak up, including criticize, offer new suggestions without being shot down. And that's something we're really committed to. Um, the other thing that PCORI has made very clear, and it is a great idea, is that people can be involved at all stages of the research. You know, traditionally with a lot of research, you only participate as a subject. You get handed a survey or you're in the trial and you contribute data, and that's all. But really, patients can play a role in all phases in planning the study, which can be anything from picking the questions that we're going to study and prioritizing them, to helping pick out the outcome measures we're going to use, how we're going to measure these, carrying out the study, which can be you know, reviewing those conform informed consent documents that are just full of under un understandable legalese and making us have something that really makes sense, to even doing some of the research, interviewing other people, um, giving out surveys, helping us look at the data, and then also helping us share the study results. And that can be through traditional forums, like this, giving presentations or authoring manuscripts. But it can also be, um, and I think it's very important to be in new avenues, social media, blog posts, getting it out in an understandable way. So I want to say, um, if you are interested at all in learning more about PCORI and being involved in PCORI, I highly recommend checking out this website. They have a ton of ways to engage, just like they have promoted um, engaging patients in research projects. They engage patients at all stages of the organization. You can suggest research questions, give comments on policies. Um, two of the biggest programs is reviewing grant applications. So people who have ideas for projects, you can actually be a part of reviewing those and deciding which ones will get funded. It's called merit review. And then also after projects are done, they are mandated by the legislation to write a fully accessible open access report in detail and in normal person language about what they did and it's posted online. Before it's posted, patients and other stakeholders review those reports to make sure that they have the information that would be useful and make sense. Um, and both of these activities are compensated, you know, they don't expect you to volunteer for free, so, it, and they provide um, training in both things, uh, online webinars, I think about two hours. Um, and then also they have tons of educational webinars and um, workshops that you can listen to if you're interested in more. Um, but they're trying to bring this back from this national level to how are we doing patient-centered outcomes in NF. Um, I think the NF Registry and the International Schwannomatosis Database are great opportunities to connect researchers and patients. And I know through the registry there will have been and will be more surveys going out to ask you your opinion about clinical trials. I want to give um, a lot of credit to the Department of Defense Neurofibromatosis Funding Program because a long time before this was popular, they had patients and representatives from organizations like CTF on their panels helping decide what projects get funded um, many years ago before even PCORI was a glimmer in anyone's eye. Um, and of course, the RAINS organization, which um, is having a whole session later today and is um, a great group working on clinical trial endpoints. We have had patient representatives joined with us um, working side by side with researchers um, for the past couple of months and it's been fantastic and I can't wait for more um, to hear about that later. Um, and finally, please tell us your ideas for what topics we should be studying and how to improve research. All the researchers and clinicians here would be happy to hear it and also to take it home when you go back to your own doctor to ask about the research they're doing. When you're presented with research, ask them if the patient helped them. I think we're all gonna have to push this forward. Not everyone is on board yet, but they will be. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, I interview patients with schwannomatosis for my 
my dissertation, so asking about their diagnosis, and all the bright ideas I have that I write about in my paper, it's fundamentally because someone with traumatosis told it to me. So it really is a big help, and I can't wait for patient-centered outcomes to be all of what uh, NF research has to offer. Thank you.